Welcome to Art Talk. I'm Patricia Shippey, your host of Through the Eyes of the Artist, a program that focuses on art from the human perspective by getting to know the artists, their attitudes, their motivations, even their lifestyles, all the things that influence their artistic expression, giving us an opportunity to see our world through the eyes of the artist. Our guest artist today is Mary Billingsley, who has always been an artist and who has explored and worked in various media over the years, from colorful abstract paintings to collage, and then art deco wall hangings and colorful pieced fabrics. Her most recent work is a unique and original series of still life paintings based on the life of Christ which we shall see and talk about today. As you know, Art Talk is about each artist's personal expression or aesthetic relating to the world. Mary's chosen subject, matter, happens to have a spiritual dimension. And I must remind our audience that Art Talk is not a religious art program, but now, some biographical background for you. A Connecticut native, Mary started taking serious art courses as a high school student. She taught art while attending college, receiving her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Syracuse University, and then her Master's in Fine Art at Boston University. She has continued to teach art over the years while also raising a family living and working in Italy for a period of time, and continuously exhibiting her work. She has been the recipient of numerous scholarships and prizes over the years, and has shown her work in art centers, galleries, and museums throughout the United States and in Italy. Welcome to Art Talk, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> nice to, to have you here today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, we have a lot to talk about, but I spoke about your distinct phases of artistic expression, and I really would like to first focus on the transition from painting and collage into the fabric work. How did that happen, and why did that happen? Well, that actually, I found through my lifetime as an artist, very often personal things that happen in my life uh, sort of are, are a, a point of, of transition that cause a new expression in my art. And that was simply a matter of that particular transition was I had been working, as you said, in painting and uh, acrylic at that time. And uh, that was a long while ago. And uh, my son, one of my, my youngest son was in uh, third grade and fell out of a tree that spring and which made me realize that the summer was going to be, uh, he broke his arm, the summer was going to be a rather... Uh, at home time. At home time, available, I would be available as a mama. And so I thought, well, instead of being put off by lots of interruptions, of course, that would happen, I thought, well, maybe I will just work in fabric. And just, I was thinking I would make a uh, fabric uh, bedspread. So I uh, approached this as actually a painter and spent three months on it and enjoyed myself no end and did a very large piece which as, when I finished it I thought hmm this is this is this was very very satisfying and my so color color was color important. and and uh, the composition actually it was somewhat of an abstraction relating to nature to landscape 
And uh, it, my husband suggested that instead of putting it on the bed, which would probably get rather snagged, why don't we hang it up, which I thought was a great idea. So I, we did do that, and I actually um, thought, well, I think I'll do another one. I think I'll continue. So that was the beginning of, oh, heavens, eight, ten years of uh, doing fabric pieces for corporations and for architects and so forth. This particular piece I entered into a national show, and it was accepted and then uh, ch uh, chosen to tr uh, travel around the country for a year, ah. and it was bought. And so, I mean, it was just kind of one thing led to another. It was the beginning of, a, the beginning whole of a whole series. another medium that I had not yeah. used in art. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it was a very happy accident that, yes, that yes. broke an arm. Well, yeah, that's, it, that's fascinating to me. I'd like to talk some more about that whole period and the corporate aspect and the patronage that that in involved. But first, you know, we're going to first go and give our audience an idea of where you came from and where mm -hmm. you're going. So we're going to, in the beginning now, go on over to your studio and see a few of your paintings and then the evolution and where you are mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So let's go do that now. We just had a little tour of Mary's living room, and we were in the kitchen there, and showing you a couple of her early paintings, quite early abstract acrylic paintings. And then as we went along, you saw a beautiful fabric piece, a stitched fabric piece in those oranges and browns. And now we're here in Mary's studio in front of another large abstract pieced fabric piece, which Mary is going to describe to us a little bit. Yes, uh, this piece actually I made for this room. This is a large wall, and this is the first piece I made in this room of fabric. I had done a lot of fabric work earlier, and a lot since, but uh, this is a, an example of one that is uh, hand-dyed, uh, the, all the colors. And also, uh, the, the uh, technique is, is called pieced, and which means that the um, stitching is from the, um, the r stitched on the wrong side of the fabric, so there's a very clean look and rather precise. And uh, this was certainly a, um, a, actually a way I worked for 10 years before I got into the work that I'm doing now. And this was in? This was in, uh, this piece was done in 1987. Mm -hmm. And you've done some since, and now you're Yes, you're in the last three years, three and a half years, I've on to a whole new expression. Great. Let's go look at the whole new expression. This is the most recent uh, painting that I have uh, completed in a series that I've been working on for 
three, I guess three and a half years now, um, a series of paintings based on the life of Christ. And this particular one is uh, called uh, Finding Jesus in the Temple Shrine. I've used the word shrine in all the works. Every work has the word shrine used because it seems that I, in my uh, putting together of these ideas, there's a certain sort of formality and a certain um, a sense, maybe a sort of a stage set or whatever aspect to them, and they, that word just seems to fit. Now, I begin with uh, sort of a, an inclination toward some aspect of the life of Christ. And this particular one, um, I was thinking about family and the importance of family and how uh, that needs to be strengthened today. And in sort of running, running this by my mind, the whole idea of, of this particular moment in the life of Christ came to me strongly enough to go ahead and, and really tackle it. Now, I begin with a, uh, I make a still life. And it, this one does indeed look somewhat like a stage set. And I have used the little figures that I have a, a little St. Joseph and a little Mary figure there that I've used in previous pieces that of course would be used for this one. So I, ha I generally place them in a certain manner. And then I made a little Jesus figure. The Jesus was 12 in this particular moment in his life. So I actually made that little piece for this still life. And then the whole idea of Jesus talking to the elders uh, that's a group of people and instead of in, at this point now that I've been working doing this for three and a half years I indicated a certain space relationship with the blocks of wood rep representing uh, figures um, that I realized I was later going to invent on my in my painting I didn't the details at this point I didn't didn't worry about I, I worked out the columns uh, I used a scarf in order to get a certain flow a certain sort of gesture uh, the little sort of business in the back, which was going to hold the Ten Commandments, was again going to be an invention. And I, I kind of worked out the spatial and somewhat, it's kind of the atmospheric sense in the still life. Then after I got that to a point where I really felt that I could move on, my next step would be to do a drawing of it. And I, I do, a, a, do the drawings rather large scale, full size. And the, the one right here is the uh, drawing that I work, that I completed for this piece. Um, the drawing might take, um, it might take about a week or two to put together the still life. It might take another week or so to do the drawing. And I, uh, after I get that to the work out what I want, in this particular piece, I really did start to sketch in the character of these of the elder, so that I would, you know, have a sense of where I was going. And I was, I wanted, I all my pieces do have a certain humor, and and I wanted, um, I had to envision individuality and 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 a seriousness and wisdom and so forth, but yet keep it in a childlike way. As you see, I use toys, and so this I wanted to keep this in context of of that that sort of um, sense of character. So I do the drawing, and then I transfer the drawing on to the, the uh, very nice quality watercolor paper. This is the, actually the finished painting. And gouache is the medium of paint that I use, which is a water-based, opaque paint. Watercolor, it's a watercolor, but it's opaque. Re a regular watercolor is transparent, and gouache is opaque. Now, I use gouache in not the typical manner. I use it. Um, as almost as a watercolor, and I layer, layer and layer and layer um, uh, transparent coatings and sort of build up the, the piece. And all in all, I would say it's been, it probably took me two months to do this painting. Um, as I'm working, I'm certainly referring to the still life. Uh, at a certain point, I rely more on what's going on in my head, what I'm envisioning in my head, and I gradually come to what, I, what I'm aiming for. It, it's kind of oh, a surprise to me, but yet I get to that point and I say, yes, this is what I want, and so then, then I know I'm done. Um, I did add in this particular painting uh, some key quoting from the Bible pertaining to this particular scene, which I, I uh, do in other paintings too, when there's very significant quotations, I like to incorporate them uh, in a very natural way, as if they're part of the architecture or, or somehow part of an object. And um, I also I did that in this one. Uh, this one, I'll, in fact, I'll read it to you. Uh, 
uh, Mary says to Jesus, Son, why have you done this to us? You see that your father and I have been searching for you in sorrow. And then Jesus says, uh, Why did you search for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Now, actually, this is significant because this is the, st the statement that Jesus knew that he was indeed the son of God. And it's a very key, a key statement in, in uh, if, a statement of his divinity. So I just wanted to get that in. Um, I also incorporated a, a little dog in this one. Now, I've used that dog in earlier paintings that I'll show you later. Uh, I'm sure that's not biblical, that there was a dog that was with Mary and Joseph that would, it would be allowed in the temple, much less maybe they owned it. But I had used it right from the start in, a, in, early, in part of the early series. And I just thought it was a nice touch because Indeed, if there was a dog that they owned, I think that dog would care about finding Jesus. And I just, I know that children that see these works get a great deal of kick about a dog because they might have a pet. And it, it just draws them into the work. It's just another, another way. So I, you know, I, I wanted to include the dog. And then I do also include, this is um, a little, the Holy, that represents the Holy Spirit, which I'd like to do in, this, in, in some of the paintings also. But yet I also did that because I thought it was sort of nice to put an element of, of up on top of this uh, sort of pillar arrangement. I just thought that added a nice touch. So my choices for what I use in these works have to do with the symbolism of the um, objects and whether or not they're wonderful to look at. And I, very often I will just be, it, it, it find that I, I find something that's wonderful to look at and it seems to fit in a work here and there. So there's, there's several considerations of why I choose the different objects that I choose. I'd now like to show you a few of my earlier pieces. Uh, this one is called The uh, Mocking of Christ. And uh, I found that very often an idea for a piece um, comes to me as a reaction to an evil that is, that is in the world. And this particular piece um, came about when the bombing of Dubrovnik was taking place back in the early part of the war in Yugoslavia. And it was just a horror, I think, to all of us, and an especial horror to us because it, in our house because we've lived in, in uh, Yugoslavia, for, we actually, for three months, and have been to Dubrovnik. And it's a, such a beautiful, beautiful city, just a little jewel, and the fact that it was just being torn apart was very, very difficult. And also the fact that some of the lovely churches, m as many as, as the, they possibly could, were, were being destroyed. And it was, to me, an example of, again, another example of in today's society where Christ is being mocked. And in, in response to that, I, I put together this still life, which um, shows the, the, the really the sad, the sad episode. And I wanted to um, show the horror of the uh, situation, but at the same time, I wanted also children to not be totally frightened by it. And so I sort of came to me that making figures of, the, of the, the, those that were mocking Christ out of cardboard would perhaps be a good way of uh, getting the idea across. They could be the meanness of the act, action, but then, of course, yes, they are cardboard figures. And I used like, twistums and so forth for uh, a belt and a little, um, uh, the little kind of thing we use on garbage bags to close the top. and and. Uh, thumbtacks and whatever. I used common objects to, with, with these figures and so in a certain way they also have some humor but then when you really look at it, it is, they are being very, very nasty and so I don't think that diminishes in any way the, uh, the, whole, the whole scene. Now I also used a, a prop, another prop in this painting which is a, a metal grate that we have. We've got lots of interesting objects in our house and this is a metal grate that I just think is very beautiful so I utilized that as perhaps some iron piece in a garden. I also brought in rocks from outside and built myself a stone wall. Now this is the finished piece and you can see the stone wall there in the front which is at life size to the wall that I, and it really looks like the wall that I constructed. Uh, for the still life, and then the, the cardboard figures, and the figure of Christ, and the metal grating, and then I had a little plant that is called a crown of thorns 
plant, which I, it was only like four inches high, but I brought that up and I uh, used that, but then invented this the, the viney character behind just because I like that I just liked that element of garden. And, and my idea was to show this really rather peaceful, beautiful little scene if, at first, but then as you look closer, you see this, this nasty business going on. And it's, it's kind of a, um, the contrast, I think, is, is, can be poignant. Uh, I also included a little white, uh, kind of a marble-looking stone there on the left. And there is a, a, a part in scripture of, of the uh, stone that the builders rejected, which refers to Christ as the stone the builders rejected. So there is, the, uh, again, a visual symbol that I just, it, it's not obvious, but it's there. And um, this, to me, was a very satisfying painting to do because I, I was able then to counter in my own self, in my own life, the evil that was taking place elsewhere. Then we, I have a couple of other paintings that are rather recent that I would also like to uh, show you. Uh, this piece is called Veneration of the Cross Shrine. And uh, the idea came to me this past Easter. This is a rather recent piece. And um, actually on Good Friday, there is uh, a, whole, a little moment in Good Friday where there is um, a, a, a part of the liturgy that is called Veneration of the Cross. And it struck me very much it, for the first time in my life, if because I've been aware of Good Fridays all my life, but this one it struck me very much of the significance of it. And I put together this uh, still life uh, on East, the afternoon of Easter, which happened to be a rainy day, if, if uh, you all remember. And I put together this little uh, Christ figure, which is actually a bean bag I made and stitched because I felt the slump of a bean bag was, was very... Um, significant and, 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 and a good useful uh, sort of figure to, to do for this particular piece. And I had already used this cross in an earlier piece, so I had this available. Um, this, uh, I, have, I always have lots of different boxes and things that I use in my pieces, so this is an old box that I was able to use. I had these angels, I also use lots of different angels. And um, lit the candles and anyway put the still life together basically in an afternoon which is kind of a record for me it takes a lot longer usually and then I uh, drew it and painted it and this is the painting now this is one of the few paintings where I really tried to capture the still life as exactly as I could I particularly like the lighting of the lit candles on the Christ figure and um, so I really this was more of a direct kind of approach than, than the earlier paintings that I've talked about. So I really, really just used that still life uh, quite realistically and uh, captured the idea that I wanted to uh, convey. And I was very pleased with the results. There's another piece I would like to show you that um, was done before this one. And this was uh, a piece with lots and lots of dolls that I, I own and also friends who lend me a lot of their dolls. And this piece is called uh, Jesus and the Children. And this was prompted by back in the spring, early spring and, and I guess during the winter, there was just seemed to me to be incessant talk about rain, the rainbow curriculum floating around. And I got a little tired of that and I thought, huh, ra the r children of the rainbow. So I did my own Children of the Rainbow, which was great fun. And I, I have wonderful um, dolls that, that I was able to use from Eskimos to wonderful Indian papoose and uh, dolls from oh, very many different countries. So I uh, made this little house really from, from a, a wood, little wood box and then just added on and added on and added on until I made something that I thought would be great fun to draw and had a little interior. The, the little Mary figure that I have used here is uh, now is in one of the other pieces that I'm using, but I have uh, Mary and Joseph, and this is Jesus, I, I've, in my mind, figured he must be about four years old in this piece, and all the neighborhood children and whatever of the world are coming to play, and it's just a very domestic scene, and it just gave me great satisfaction to do something that was very peaceful and very loving, and, and the world was at peace, and uh, it sort of kept a certain, helped me keep a certain balance in the craziness of what's going on in politics and also in the, uh, the wars of the world. And um, the, I, I, I put the wording in, let the children come to me, which is actually a phrase that Jesus said as an adult. But I thought it, 
I said, yes, let the children come to him. And, and it was, this was uh, just a certain way of, of uh, expressing that. So um, this is, uh, these are several pieces. I would like um, to, to show you some more. Uh, later on, I believe in the program, there's going to be uh, a, the series of the, piece, the 22 pieces that are now complete are going to be shown, and I'll be able to talk about those. That was remarkable, Mary, and thank you for that visit to your studio. Um, we talked earlier about the transition from painting to the collage and then the fabric, particularly mm -hmm. into the fabric work. Well, now I'd like to know how and why this remarkable transition to mm -hmm. the stage set series. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the wor the, this work that I'm working on now is totally unlike anything I've ever done in my whole career. And it evolved um, over, I would say, it, it took a couple of years of, of sort of mulling and, and figuring. And what I said to myself over and over again was, what do I really want to do? I had done the fabric. I had, as I have said, I've stroked corporate egos for 10 years yeah. with the, because that was dealing with, with uh, commissions and this and that. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to bring in, into my work um, this, uh, other aspects of myself. Uh, and this, the spiritual side as well as back, getting back to painting. Uh -huh. And I would, would say, well, now what do I really want to do? Because it was wide open. I, and sure, over subject a, matter. Yeah, it universal. was over a couple of years I really decided what I really wanted to do was I really wanted to paint the life of Christ, but I didn't have any idea how. And I don't like, particularly, I'm not drawn to um, a contemporary religious work, a lot that I've seen I'm not drawn to. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't interested in necessarily working in abstraction, as I had been so much in my past. And, but then, on the other hand, I, I, really, I really don't paint like Fra Angelico, or I, don't, I hadn't had that kind of ba background. Yeah. So what I decided to do, uh, actually what happened, I didn't really decide, I, uh, I guess it was now four, close to four years ago, uh, over that Christmas time, I really was coming closer and closer to the fact that well, I, what I really wanted to do was a very sort of intimate sort of um, the aspects of the life of Christ and it, it, that would not only reach adults but would reach children. Um, I wanted uh. to, to uh, use every day the, the reality of, let's say, Christ in today's world mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to show as well as the, some of the historical aspects and, and the meaning and so forth of his yeah, life. Yeah. So I figured, well, since I, my training in drawing is, it was, I had lots of training in drawing way, way back, I figured, well, the best thing to do is to, to maybe put together um, a still life that I would then draw from and paint. It, so I did that. Hence the three stages. Yes, exactly. So I, I actually started by putting together a nativity, which I do have the small, the first painting that I've done, I, I have here that I can oh, show good, you. Oh, good, good. And shall we, shall we yeah. show this? Yeah, okay. This is uh, a very small piece. This is actually okay. the only piece that I um, di did as, a, as just a trial run to kind of get started. And developed this still life mm -hmm. and then uh -huh. Uh -huh. had uh, something that I really thought was very beautiful that I then drew and painted. And this was this took a, a couple of t two to three months to basically time, yeah. to be able to um, conceive this and to finish it. So then after that... Mary, I have to interrupt you because I'm getting a signal for a oh. public service announcement, but we'll be right back. Fine. Save that thought. Mm -hmm.
is a process that fills our lives. See it. Enjoy it. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Griffiths Arts Center, New London, Connecticut. Welcome back to Art Talk. I'm here with Mary Billingsley, and we're talking about her newest series of paintings. We're going to look at a lot more of them um, on film in a few minutes. But first, I really would like to know more about the three stages of this process and how this all happened to your, to your mind. But I've got to go all the way back to corporate art first, mm -hmm. Mary, because I mean, they were the patrons mm -hmm. um, in the 70s and certainly the early 80, 80s. Mm -hmm. And I think about the, the Flemish and, and certainly the Italian altarpieces mm -hmm. and all of the, the mm -hmm. paintings of altarpieces and the Medici and the Popes mm -hmm. and that whole phase of art. Can you compare the, the corporate patrons to the time of the Medici? Or was that happening to you? As a mental process, no, do you suppose? No, uh, no, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. No, this was strictly a, a very personal thing of what do I want to do with my art? What do I want to do? Yeah. Because I think uh, artists do, uh, even though, let's say, as, as my fabric pieces, uh, I was known for them. And, um, but then you can't, I don't think any artist can just go on and on and grind out something that they're yeah. known for because you just finally know I wanted, there's the something new that has, there's something else that I want to yeah. say. And yeah. so this was, no, this, I wasn't thinking of patrons particularly in any uh -huh. way. Uh -huh. uh, I was going to wait and see where this led. Mm -hmm. um, and as a matter of fact, there is going to be a calendar that is going to, uh, uh -huh. going to be it for this um, of uh, 12 of these pieces for 1994, but that was not in my mind at all but you know, one when of I your started. But purposes was children, though. So yes, to that reach children. was in your mind. Well, yes, it's true. And I was also thinking of um, doing, a, a pre let's say, a, a precious you know, a, a piece of work that takes a long period of time. What my thoughts were, perhaps I would like to think of these uh, ultimately to be maybe posters or something that would be a reasonable cost that because many people that have seen the pieces have said, oh, I wish I could have one for my, you know, my house or my children's room or whatever. Yeah. And I, I would like them to be, uh, rather than just have the original piece that they would, would be available, I would like to have it be um, reproduced, uh, repro so. reproduced and so forth. So that was behind my thoughts also. But not from the beginning. I mean, from the beginning. From the beginning was simply, what do I really want to do? do? And then you didn't think about no, audience. No, it was only until maybe I've done about six of them. I've, actually, now I'm on number 23 Are you? But, but, uh, over a period of four years. But uh, I think when I did about the sixth one, I began to see, hmm, I, th I think, in fact, it, it st the whole thing just kept evolving. It did. Yeah. yeah, from yeah. the very, that yeah. beginning small piece. Yeah. Well, there's, um, before we go look at the um, film, this is where you're going to have it published? Well, is it actually, in? actually, this uh, magazine I, I, uh, is called My Friend, and this is uh, a publication put out by the Daughters of St. Paul in uh -huh. Boston. Mm -hmm. And after I had done about five or six of these paintings, uh, people had, you know, talking just, oh, these should be shown and so forth. I w brought them up to this this group, which they do do a great deal of um, uh, all kinds of publishing. Yeah. And one of the things yeah. that they do do is a um, children's magazine. Oh, and they were very much taken and, and indeed have been I using several of my pieces for, uh, I guess, about three, three a year for the past several years. They have been incorporating for their centerfold mm -hmm. in the magazine. And which is very, very nice because that reaches a, a lot of children. So have your, your hopes a, were Yeah, so that was the a beginning. That was just yeah. the beginning of uh, reaching an audience and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then... That's great. That's great. That will continue. Well, Mary, what about the material you're using? And, and we were talking about the various kinds of paints the other day. That's right. Tell mm -hmm. me about gouache. How did you decide on gouache? And will you explain to us mm -hmm. what is gouache? Yes, exactly. Uh, gouache is an opaque watercolor. Uh, it's a water-based paint. And whereas watercolor is transparent, it, it trans considered to be a transparent medium, gouache has uh, an inert substance in it, which it can be opaque. So I actually use it very much. It, it, one can use it thinning it down quite a bit. 
It can be used as watercolor and put on with layers and so forth and built up. Uh, but then it also has the possibilities of, of uh, being put on very opaquely. So it, ha it's, it has more freedom than watercolor. And it, the way I work, it takes me uh, uh, probably a month to do a painting. And I, I build up gradually so that uh, it's very, very, very good for that. And it dries. Mm -hmm. It's water-based. It dries. I can, you know, after it dries, I can work, continue working. Mm -hmm. Oil paint has, you know, other qualities which you can't yeah. get. Yeah. But also the wash. fine detail. And the detail, yeah. exactly. And I can combine it with drawing. And the drawing and the painting can become intermeshed very easily. And, um, well, I think about the Flemish and the Italian altar pieces that one sees in the museums that were done with tempera. I oh, mean, yes. So oh, yes. what's the difference between tempera and gouache? Well, they, I think, I believe they used a lot of egg tempera. Yeah. So the egg tempera was the, the um, actually yolk of an egg was the, yes. uh, the, 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 medium. the powder was yeah. mixed yeah. with that. Yeah. Now that in itself has a certain quality and a certain technique that's required. I. Th I don't think it's as free as I would like to be. This is this. There's just a lot more leeway in using yeah, gouache. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about also the the? Well, I call them stage sets. Mm -hmm, Had you right. studied they, stage? No, no, design not at all. No, not at all. In fact, this just just this this way of 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 having an idea uh, be realized. It just it just seemed a natural thing to do. I realized at a certain point. I I think I'm. It seems like I'm making stage sets and yeah. then working from them and uh, yeah. getting it down then on the paper. Um, well, it just seemed a natural, a natural process. Yeah. Well, design, I mean, you're dealing with line, yeah. shape, and, and the, sp and the and spatial, color. I think the, the spatial yes. aspect of yes. doing the still life and Very much so. working um, spatially yeah. uh, helped me then to, to do these ideas because they are, um, they do look like little, well, yeah, you could just shrines. I call yeah. them shrines, actually, yeah. but which are yeah. which, which a three-dimensional um, setup. Well, when you're done with the shrine, mm -hmm. um, and you then you do your drawing, mm -hmm. and then you do the painting, which yeah. we saw in the studio. Mm -hmm. Do you photograph the shrine as a memory for yourself? Well, I've done a couple. I have yeah. done a couple, but really. I, I very often deviate from that. That's a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. And very often, my, the true idea comes through f ultimately in the painting. And I don't have a, um, a reason necessarily yeah. to keep yeah. the, the shrine or to take a photograph partic that I felt. I just haven't felt so. I reuse the objects, objects and, the and objects, it's just yeah. part of the process. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I let go of it when I'm done. Once you I'm do. done with the you painting, do. I let go of yeah. the, of yeah. the of the uh, That's still life. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to take our audience through a, a short film. We're going to look at some of the series. How many in the series? Uh, well, right now, actually, uh, I have 23. I think this maybe 22 or 21 are in this particular in, in the, the film. that you have. Yeah. Well, we did take a video film of photographs, and this is going to be interesting. And I must tell everyone that they're not as clear. We cannot see the mm -hmm. fineness of your technique um, because they're a film of photographs and you don't get all of, of the uh, detail through them or the, or the fine color and the brilliance in some cases. But let's look at, at some of them and then we'll talk about them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see that the color here is barely. Which one is that, Mary? Uh, that is Annunciation Shrine, the first one. Okay. And this is the one that was just published in the magazine. Yes, that's right. This is Visitation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, the, the red does show up, but the, the little objects, well, we can it's, see the features of the people. Yeah, that would be Mary visiting her cousin uh, Elizabeth. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is uh, called um, No Room at the Inn Shrine. Oh, yes with a, yeah. a bit of a New England look. And you see, we talked about the gouache, which is opaque mm -hmm. and, and has a brilliance to it, but mm -hmm. it's not coming through as much in the photographs. Um, and that looks like lots the, of lace. The, the heavenly realm. Yeah. And then, then this uh, gathering around, I mean, a, a, a paper bag is the, I made the sense of the stable or the cave. And then the children of, from the very many countries, little dolls of various countries that represent the uh, world uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. surrounding the nativity. Yeah. 
Now this is filled with little objects as well. Yes, and this one is called um, uh, Epiphany Shrine, which the three kings are uh, searching for the, the child. And there is a... Um, and a little, a sort of a little enclosure. That actually was a drawer that, that I put up on end and let that be a little shelter. For the, for the for Madonna. The, yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the angels and so forth. The, the three kings are in a postcard below. Okay. Uh -huh. what, which the, one is that? Uh, this is presentation at the temple. And uh, that's Mary and Joseph on the left, and the baby uh, Jesus in the middle, and Simeon on the right. And this is a uh, flight into Egypt shrine. Charming, charming. And you just have all of these, oh, I love that, the angels, the floating yes, angels. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Cherubs. Yeah. Actually, the slaughter of the innocents. This depicts the slaughter of the innocents at that time. That's the reason they fled into Egypt. Yeah. So to try to show that, uh, and I wanted to incorporate that the souls of the children are there as the angels, the angels perhaps are bringing the souls of the children mm -hmm. uh, to heaven. So that was a rather serious subject. Well, yes, mm -hmm. but you, you're educating children, well, it's too. Well, it's the historical yeah. aspect and trying to show it uh, also in a, in a moment of today where it can be understood. And, and it's uh, several things in mind. That well, one. You, each one of them, though, a life experience or a happening gives you the idea, doesn't it? Yes, it does. For each shrine. Yes, exactly. And uh, very often I'm prompted by uh, something that's happened in the world um, that triggers one of the, uh, I relate it then to the life of Christ, and then interpret it uh, through the, the, these means. Modern of, day the eyes. Modern day yours. eyes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's look at a few more now, mm -hmm. Mary, and you can give us the uh, titles of each one again. This is uh, called Jesus and the Children. A little Eskimo child. That's right. A little bit of uh, everyone I could possibly, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, very many so, cultures and countries that I could uh -huh. pull together. Uh -huh. And then uh, Joseph being a carpenter, I, I had him carry wood. He has a hammer there. And this little house I put together um, in this still life. And uh, it just, mm -hmm. it's, and then it, the top says, let the children come to me, which is bringing the children of the well, that's world right. Yes, gathering you spoke around. about the rainbow mm -hmm. children. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think we talked that about one that one you saw in my studio. studio. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You see how white that looks in the background, but yes. uh, yeah. This is St. Peter's Shrine, mm -hmm. and this one has many symbols surrounding this icon. I used an icon from a calendar of Christ there. Yeah. St. Peter is a little fisherman in the front standing on the rock, yeah. and it many, many symbols relating to St. Peter. And um, this is, um, let me see, Tempest Shrine, which is a little bit complicated, hard to see here. There's lots and lots of detail uh, of marine life uh, with a postcard in the back of, uh, of the Tempest, which was an old, early Christian painting that I liked. This is called um, Healing of the Sick Shrine. And uh, this was, has actually, um, this was a, prompted by very much of something of the day, the homeless and the individuality of the homeless. Oh, yes. And I wanted to show how uh, I used different dolls that mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth to show that aspect. Uh, this is Palm Sunday Shrine with, uh, again, I used an icon and actually uh, in the back as, a, as the figure of Christ. This is Agony in the Garden with the sleeping apostles in the front, which are actually made bean bags and they are there, oh, yeah. and then the Christ figure and um, impending evil coming up above and a, a very serious yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Goodness. Well, tell me about the, the homeless. Now, we said that it's today's world that you're relating mm -hmm. exactly. to the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. and so did you just gather up dolls from well, all over well, the house? Well, actually, I saw um, a, the, the show um, Woody Woody Guthrie's, I think it was Woody Guthrie's American Song that was yeah. at the uh, Goodspeed in Chester. 
And it was very beautifully done. And, and the sense of the, the individuality of the homeless, and they're not just blank, blank, yes. you know, the, the yeah, that homeless. That you walk by, yes. It, was, it made such an impact on me that oh. I thought, well, that would be very, very, uh, that just hit me as a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. So I had various dolls and so forth, and I borrowed some from others, from friends, and put together the, uh, the still life, and then used as a uh, shelter um, f a orange crate that I got from the back of the local grocery store <laughs> and put together a little uh, shelter uh -huh, uh -huh. and then have the Christ figure in the front and uh, I call it healing the sick shrine and it's it's just relates to today it does indeed yeah yes, and, and it was yes. a very yeah. uh, a neat it's something I needed to, to, to do yeah, yeah. and it was very yeah. satisfying. So each one has a, has a, has a little a little jumping a lot off. of meaning mm -hmm. for you that yes, you it can does. elaborate on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's look at some more now. This is the scourging at the pillar, which is very mm -hmm. serious indeed. And then this one, uh, the the one that follows this that we saw in my studio, um, this one, um, the uh, mocking of Christ. Yeah. And I mentioned you, you, the situation in Yugoslavia it was very much a springboard for this idea. And yeah, that, that yes. beautiful iron grate. Yeah, yeah. And then the cardboard figures where I felt less threatening for, let's say, a child or an adult, but sure. to get across the idea in its, in its seriousness, but yet a little bit more manageable because the figures are cardboard. And this is um, one of the uh, ca uh, uh, carrying of the cross. This is one of the falls. The fi this incorporates three aspects of the carrying of the cross. There's the, the Christ figure in the back, and then two other parts of that, one of the falls and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a crucifixion. Um, and I made the Christ figure out of, again, a bean bag. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, then the angels. This is Good Friday Shrine which uh, shows the crucifixion as well as the uh, like Pieta idea of Mary and, and Jesus yeah. down below, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then other, others that were there. And um, this is Resurrection Shrine, which... Uh, yes, well, we have that here. Which we we'll have, look at yeah. it closer because the colors would show mm -hmm. through yeah. so much better exactly. in person. And that, mm -hmm. that tells this artists that photographs don't always work as well as you'd like them to. No, okay. not, not exactly, yeah. especially, yes, on the... Uh, some of the details, but not the color. Mm -hmm. And this is Sacred Heart Shrine. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, I used a, a painting that someone had done, as a fifth grade a grader had done, and I used that as my oh. uh, figure of Christ, because it, it, it just was such sure, a, a sure. strong image. I yeah, yeah. borrowed that. So it well, you did a nice. lot of teaching. So yes, did I did. Did you teach young people or all ages? I taught, uh, I've taught all ages, but I taught for actually 15 years at the foot school part-time, and I taught fourth through ninth grade. And so that all different different moments, and I also taught adults at the uh, Creative Arts Workshop in New Haven oh, for yes. a period of time. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I very much I think that my um, experience with with teaching children and working with children and the spontaneity and the uh, courage that they have to just express an idea without just getting very bogged down. I, I find when I'm when I have an idea that I think. Well, now, how would a child, how would they approach it? And you just oh, break through all kinds of barriers. that's where the cardboard comes that's in. That's right. You just break you through just all kinds of barriers by just thinking, you know, rather than chewing over it as an adult. Great. That's great. Yeah. Well, Mary, did you study, did you seriously study the Bible? I mean, was that, has that been very much part, part of your of life? It's part of me. It's just part of my life of just, yeah. I'm very familiar with it, and I do yeah. read it, you know, yeah. regularly. Yeah. But and you're not aiming to be ecclesiastical, really. Not I mean, you, really. Yeah. I, I think it. I think people are drawn in, and they do ask questions. And uh, there's much symbolism and much reference to the Bible. I think, but it can meet people at that level or at any level. It, it can yeah. be. It, yeah. It's. It's depends how deeply a person would like to, you know, look into it. Sure. Look into each piece. Sure. Well, that's what I said earlier in the program that each artist gets his or her fulfillment from a personal expression. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you think about it, really from, from the beginning of the first century, certainly up through the Renaissance, the subject of art 
was religion. That's right, or exactly. Or religious objects. I mean, exactly. think about Leonardo. That's what it was. Or, that's that's was their inspiration. Their, that's exactly. all it was. That's right. And so today we have performance art. That's right. Um, we have uh, a group of artists you probably read about handing out $10 bills to the that's right. illegal mm -hmm. aliens. Um, that's right. And so whatever. Conceptual art, whatever. That's right. That's exactly. right. So, so in a certain way I am going back to that probably the kind of thinking uh, that, that took place at that time, but because I am 19, you know, 1993 here, yeah. Uh, it's doing it, looking at it with today's eyes. Yes, you know. yes, but also using lots of objects and iconography from your life, from, That's right. from your a, own the, personal life. Exactly. Yeah. So they are very intimate yeah. to me. Right. Yeah. yeah, but also your purpose. I find that's, that's uh, quite remarkable, too, um, how the whole idea came to you of what you want yes. to do, mm -hmm. um, but children wa was very much in your mind, wasn't, wasn't that Yes, true? absolutely, and uh, I think that, the, that there's so much today, children are kind of in a whirl with the various things that are thrown at them, and I think that I have actually shown these pieces to children of all ages, and they're very, very, uh, they become very um, contemplative about them and ask, and very, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, sure. the heart of them yeah. is there and it's obvious and they uh, they respond to them in a very more thoughtful way than let's say MTV or you know whatever. Well you're introducing art to them yes, too. Yes exactly in a, in and they're intrigued by be, the objects but then they also yeah. ask the questions because of the subject matter and there's just it just adds another dimension mm -hmm. that I think that very often is missing today in the visual well, yeah. yes. Well, but speaking of dialogue, and you you have children to to respond for you. Do you get other feedback on your work? I mean, do you have other artists looking at oh, your yes. work? Do you oh, have I've a dialogue had, about? Oh, I've had. Oh, many, many people. Many, many people have uh, seen my my pieces, and um, they uh, there's it, it, there's endless dialogue. Yes. It's, yes. It's very satisfying, and I, I it just makes me want to continue with this series, Terrific. go on and on, because it's, it, it does bring out a lot to the, in the viewer that perhaps they would, you know, had not thought about. And I get a lot of teary-eyed viewers Do that say, oh, excuse Do me, I feel so, you know, I say, well, that's all right, you know, but it's very dear yeah. because they're touched, yeah. and, that, and then yeah. they talk about their own experiences, and it's very satisfying yeah. to, ha to be doing work that, that Brings You're out getting that, that in, response in the viewer. from. Well, I'm going to share with the audience, which um, I know, and I know that your husband is also an artist and a mm -hmm. sculptor who does these very modern machine like mm -hmm. abstract objects. Do you criticize each other's work, or do you oh, come do oh, you come together somewhere? Well, where we've been we've been married a good long time, and so through all our various uh, types of work that that we both have done, we, yeah. we interact very definitely. And um, I, know, I, I know what he is aiming for. He knows what I'm aiming for. And I think that we, the input that we give each other is very valuable because we respect our, you know, I respect Your his vision. He respects my vision. Are, and we yeah. uh, are careful not to over, you know, step hard on each other's uh, <laughs> uh, expressions. But I think yeah. that we value definitely uh -huh. the input uh -huh. because yeah. of that. And yeah. uh, it's yeah. very, very helpful. In fact, yeah. I I've, I've very much appreciate John's input because mm -hmm. it's... Yeah. Um, well, that, that's just interesting to yeah. me because you're so different oh, yeah. in, in your work, yeah. certainly. You're so, so different. Well, now, how would you, Mary, describe your work to someone? Um, mm -hmm. Or how would you describe yourself as an artist? Perhaps I should put it that way. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> is that a, is, that's a tough question, yeah, isn't it? because I, think it I don't be... put myself in a cubbyhole and say, uh, I think my whole life is um, is what I am. And and so yes, the art, art the art is a very big part of it. But I think that my whole life is what I am. So uh, to I don't know. I, I have tried to describe my my work to people to people who yeah. haven't seen it, yeah. Yeah. and it's very it's it's yeah, impossible. I'm sorry, that was a tough So question, I do have. <laughs> so I do. Then they do. That's you why know, we're sharing it here exactly. today. Exactly. No, I think to to see it is really, you know, the the thing, uh, the yeah. thing that it has yeah. to be because. Yeah. Do you think you know w what direction you're going to go in next? Do you have any thoughts? Well, about actually, where you're I want to continue as these inspirations continue. I will continue with what I'm doing. Um, I also. Uh, would like at some point to uh, maybe do a whole series on the parables 
<laughs> which, yes. which I think are mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. interesting in the Bible. Yeah. And they're filled with uh, imagery that it would be fun to put into today's terms. Indeed, today's, would. Yeah, Indeed it would. Yeah, it would be would. very intriguing. Yeah. Now, I'm not letting myself think about this a whole lot because I don't want to get off the track I'm on right now. Yeah. But I, it's something that, that I think would be quite interesting. You do have thoughts. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Great. Good. It, it will be interesting to see. As, but I'm not even worrying about that. I just take each piece. I don't, ha I don't even know what I'm going to do next. You with, don't with, know no. the next piece. I, oh, when oh, I finish the okay. one I'm on, then the inspiration That's will it. happen for yeah. the next one. Yeah. I don't Great. jump ahead. Well, here's to inspiration. <laughs> Mary, we've run out of time. But <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today thank at you. Art Talk. We've enjoyed it. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's Art Talk as well. Until next time, I'm Patricia Shippey.